All right, welcome back. We're going to look at naming covalent compounds in this lesson. Uh, specifically, we are looking at the binary covalent, nonmetal to nonmetal, nonmetal to nonmetal prefix system of names. As I just said, this is also called the prefix naming system, and it's going to be only for covalent compounds. These will all be binary for our class, um, which means there's going to be two atoms, both of which will be nonmetals. Uh, so both of these atoms are going to live on the right-hand side of the periodic table. Uh, these are really simple. Here's your rule. The first atom, uh, which is going to be the least electronegative, which means it's going to be, of the two atoms, the further one away from fluorine, uh, will get a prefix only if the subscript is two or higher. So in other words, it will not receive a prefix of mono. Um, the second atom will always receive a prefix, and that's including mono. Um, the other thing that you do on the second atom is switch the ending to IDE. You do need to know these prefixes, mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. Um, mono, one on one, mono, e, mono, di, um, most of you probably know, tri, like tricycle, triceratops, tetra. Uh, there's a video game, an old video game called Tetris. Every single one of those shapes happens to have four squares, tetra, four. Penta, like the pentagon, hexa, um, there's an X in here just like there is an X in six. Hepta uh, is one that you kind of more need to just remember. Octa, octagon, um, octopus, octomom, eight. Nada has two ends like nine, and then deca or ten of decathlon. The flow chart. So you've identified this as a covalent compound because there's two nonmetals stuck to each other. The first atom is a nonmetal. The first atom, as I said, is the least electronegative. It's going to get a prefix uh, for subscript of two or higher, and the second atom always gets that prefix. I'd like to show you how to do some of these problems by looking at some examples. The examples that I have on the board are really good at showing how these different prefixes are applied to these formulas that turn into names. The first formula, I see that it's a nonmetal to a nonmetal. Both these atoms live on the right hand side of the periodic table. I'm going to find my atom. It has a subscript of 2, so it's going to need a prefix. That subscript for 2 is di. And then the second atom always gets a prefix. For 3, it's tri. The first atom gets its full name, so that's nitrogen. I'm going to put the prefix ahead of nitrogen. which will end up being dinitrogen. The second atom always has a prefix, and it gets the IDE style name. So trioxygen turns to oxide, trioxide. The second problem, again, nitrogen is a nonmetal, so nonmetal to nonmetal. There's no subscript on the nitrogen, so it doesn't get a prefix. The second atom always has a prefix, three, as we just saw, is tri. First atom gets its full name. So we have nitrogen and then the I gets switched to IDE ending. So iodine turns to iodide. Nitrogen triiodide. Notice this is a case where we keep the double um, I's it doesn't turn to triadide. Sometimes we drop the um, prefixes, the prefixes vowel if it's a double vowel start. Not always though. So if you happen to incorrectly put two vowels in a row, I won't take off points. Third problem, again, nonmetal to nonmetal. No prefix on the first atom, so nitrogen gets its full name. The second atom has a subscript of one. It's an imaginary subscript. Second atom always gets a prefix, so it's going to be mono. Uh, oxygen gets the IDE because it's the second atom. IDE oxide. We are not going to do a double O. So I'm going to drop the O on the mono, just mon. Oxide. The final problem, prefix for two is di, prefix for 
prefix for three is tri. So phosphorus gets the prefix, full name, diphosphorus, tri, and then sulfur turns to sulfide. trisulfide. So here we have dinitrogen trioxide, nitrogen triiodide, nitrogen monoxide, diphosphorus trisulfide. What you should have learned by watching this video is how you determine if a compound happens to be a covalent compound by looking at nonmetal to nonmetal, and you now know that's called the prefix naming system. The first atom gets a prefix for subscripts two or greater. The second atom always has a prefix. You do need to memorize those prefixes. And don't forget that the second atom also gets the IDE uh, ending on its name. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.